I think we're all into a mode of thinking about recoveries is that they're short because most recessions in the past have lasted for a couple of years and you think, oh, in six months or a year, the economy will be back to normal. All of the evidence that I've seen suggests that this recovery is going to be very long and very sluggish. It could be five years, uh, even under reasonably optimistic assumptions, before we're back to anything that you might call five full employment. Five more years? Five, or five, five, or five more, years. Five more years. So we're basically looking at an eight year recession. We're looking at a Japanese. Eight year sluggish. We're looking at a Japanese type situation. Now, you know, we don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I am. But the point is that in the process of getting our fiscal house in order, we must not uh, undermine the strength of the recovery. What does that mean? That means that we should have policies, including reform of Social Security, including reform of Medicare, including reform of the tax system in a way that raises more revenue, but that doesn't kick in right away. Um, Second thing I would emphasize that Ron didn't mention is the need for shared sacrifice. You asked a minute ago, John, is this going to be painful? Uh, I would say it's going to be very painful. What we need to do is way beyond what anybody imagines. When you talk to the public, I've been around the country and talked about this in many different cities with the public, and they think all you need to do is to get a hold of fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, cut a few bureaucrats in Washington, free salaries, uh, get rid of fraud in some of our programs, and that will take care of the problem. It's just not true. Seventy percent of all revenues right now go for just three programs, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Uh, so we need shared sacrifice, and that means that both revenues and spending need to be on the table, as Ron emphasized. But I would then, he's been somewhat critical of the president, and I thought it was interesting when Ken Duberstein said, is this going to be a referendum on Obama, or is this going to be a debate about the role of government and about how we uh, share the pain that we need to have in our future? And I think it has to be and will be in part about the degree of inequality we have in our society now. Uh, the Occupy Wall Street has put this issue on the table. The top 1% now gets 20% of all income in our economy. That's more than double what it was 30 years ago. And yet, when you look at Obama's com likely competitors for the presidency, let's say, let's take Mitt Romney, because he's going to be the likely opponent, what is he proposing? He is proposing deep tax cuts that would increase the deficit something like $2 trillion over the next decade. Furthermore, the top 1% would get 57% of the benefits from those tax, further tax cuts that he's proposing. Uh, that data comes from the group that uh, Bill Gale uh, presides over, the Tax Policy Center. And uh, how, is he, how is he reconciling that with the idea of a smaller uh, government in which uh, deficits don't continue to balloon? He's reconciling it by saying, oh, well, we will have a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, and we will reduce spending to 20% of GDP, but he doesn't tell you how. And we will do all that immediately. So in my view, um, the president does uh, deserve some criticism for not, for example, supporting Bowles Simpson. But when you ask compared to what, and you look at what Romney's proposing and what the Republican Party in general is proposing, it's both uh, what Obama's proposing is both uh, fairer, calls for shared sacrifice, and is much more likely to keep the recovery going.